Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. So, um, I would like to contribute some methodological considerations to the topic of today's conference, which in my opinion, unable a better understanding of the challenges of European historiography. First, I would like to outline my PhD project to show to what extent comparative historiography can encounter methodological problems and then present the method of discourse analysis as a transdisciplinary approach to European historiography. So uh, the next page, uh, please. And thanks. So at the University of Montpellier, I'm doing my PhD on German and French history didactics between 1963 and 2005. And I'm studying the interactions between these didactics of history and political objectives, as well as developments in society as a whole. So the signing of the Elysee contract between Konrad Adenauer and uh, Charles de Gaulle is a decisive moment since it has supported national research projects. Also considering the mediated history, history, history at school in, bo in both countries. And the publication of the first German-French history book can be viewed as a return of over 50 years of research. So in the presentation, you can see uh, the third, um, the European history of the 19th and 20th century in German and French uh, languages, language and with uh, German and French uh, sources. In short, the research projects regarding the historical images converted in the regular schools in both countries are varied. Textbooks, specialist literature, secondary sources, qu uh, quantitative and qualitative studies with uh, students have been carried out and continu continued since the 1970s. However, it, it is uh, striking to note that the topic of different national didactics and pedagogical conception is hardly given and is only treated subordinately. Uh, the, uh, the next uh, slide, please. Perfect. Thanks. But, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, it's uh, one uh, one slide uh, before. Yeah, perfect, thanks. But how should didactics be defined? I use the definition of, of uh, Bernard Chenevli. Didactics is a cultural tool that is shaped by social, political, and cultural factors and is intended to guarantee the transmission of a colonized knowledge of a community to the next generation. Not only the knowledge imparted, in my case, the thematic of historical images, but also, also the way of conveying influences, the historical images of the next generation and future, future citizens, culturally and historically. At the same time, the importance of history teaching, which has had in France since the Third Republic, the task to educate the future citizens of France and in Germany, the goal of the responsible citizen in the past war period, who should be, who should be immune to, to, uh, to totalitarian regimes and anti-democratic currents. At the same time, it should be borne in mind that the definition of didactics I have presented represents the definition of general didactics, but not of specialist didactics. But how does one define the didactics of history teaching? Is it dealing with different ped pedagogical methods for imparting historical knowledge? If we, follow, if we follow the definition of the German historian Karl Ernst Jeismann, history didactics in Germany deals with the education of the historical awareness of the students. But what is historical awareness? Historical consciousness is, de is, defin is defined by the student's development of awareness that any analysis of historical problem depends on the subject's point of view, depending on social environment, nationality, 
or other social categories that constitute the subject's historical perception. In addition, this subject's dependence on social categories is reinforced by the subject's dependence on his time. This dependency on social categories and the historical period should pass on the students. This approach reflects today's history, history in German schools. If there is a chair of, for history didactics at every university in Germany that trains future teachers of history, this subdiscipline between history and didactics does not exist in France. Apart from a few essays, there's only one work from France from uh, 1992 that explicitly addresses didactics of history. However, it should be noted that there are still French languages publications, but they come from Switzerland or Quebec, from France. So now the next uh, slide, uh, please, uh, to talk about the methodology. Thanks a lot. The presentation of my PhD project shows a typical case of a comparative history research project, which is confront, confronted with different traditions and approaches in teaching of history. How to compare it? I push you a transdisciplinary linguistic and historical approach to analyze the interactions between research and history teaching political and social issues in France and Germany between 1960 and 2005. The analysis of the didactics of history is based on a corpus analysis, using the tools and methods of discourse analysis within a digitized German and French corpus based on, article, on articles published in specialist journals. Um, the next um, page, please. Thanks a lot. As a result, the two French and German corpora meet the three key requirements for building a text textomatic corpus. The meaning is expressed here by coherence and relevance, acceptance by representability and regularity here by homogeneity of the corpus. The selected Journals represent the most important journals of the didactic debate in both countries. For the meaning, they are published regularly during the period uh, covered, acceptance, and consistency is ensured by the number of equivalent, equivalent numbers. The hypothesis is that the discourses and the examined journals build up knowledge and structure cognitive organization around concepts such as that of the nation state or historical consciousness. Uh, next pa page, please. Thanks a lot. After constructing a corpus that conforms to the rules of Benedict Pansman, a quantitative analysis equipped with a TXM software from the University of uh, Lyon enables the creation of keywords and topics in speech that relate to the main topic, namely the didactics of history. After this first quantitative analysis, follows a qualitative analysis using linguistic methods like the semantic, pragmatic, or cognitive approach. The pre-coding of the results is avoided by the quantitative analysis and the proposal of subtopics subtopics, which are treated qualitatively. The epistemological danger of a classic hermeneutic analysis in the sense of historical research consists in the in-house production of results that are influenced by the prior knowledge of the researcher. The textometric approach enables an interdisciplinary discussion between the results of this discourse analysis on disciplinary didactics and the political and social history of France and Germany between 63 and 2005. This would provide an answer to the question of the degree of interaction between research and the political and social area. To what extent does the didactics of history react directly or indirectly to political goals and social challenges? Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. For a more differentiated analysis, 
the French and German corpora are divided into several sub which are not only interested in a di diachronic German-French comparison, but also in a synchronic way. By problematization, the succession of the national governments, the subcorpora are defined accor according to the dates of the French governments. In addition, the of the uh, partial corpora after the French governments will improve the synchronous comparison with the German governments. Um, the next uh, slide, please. Thanks. So, implication for your historiography. As early as 2004, Michael Werner and uh, Benedict Zimmermann addressed methodological challenges in comparative historiography. The basic problem is the transfer of knowledge between different frames of reference which is reflected in the example of historical didactics in France and Germany in different historiographical lines, different understandings of the state and different educational concepts. A purely heuristic comparison of the two historical didactic uh, developments of both countries would run the risk of either adopting conceptual comparison for one country and then comparing them indirectly with those of the second country, or using different concepts from both countries to compare different approaches based on constructed comparison categories without to observe the cultural refer 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 reference framework mentioned. And the last slide, please. Thanks. The discourse analysis, which analyzes the historical development of various uh, national and international discourses with the help of dig digitized documents, offers the possibility of respecting the national frame for further parts of the public debate in order to simult simultaneously place it in a pan-European context. This can be done by comparing historical developments in a national and international framework in a synchron and uh, diachronic way. As a result, the cultural frame of refer reference of the nation state is respected, but can also be used in conjunction with the power of the pan-European public as well as the European uh, institutions. Finally, the transdisciplinary approach to European historiography offers the opportunity to, to reduce the, the tension between the historiography of the institutions of the European Union, the historiography of, or the national frame of reference of the member states, and the Europeanization of so socio-cultural realities, and to find a method, method methodically an approach between the national historiography and the supranational supranationality of the European Union. Thanks a lot and yeah, thanks a lot.